Welcome. In this demonstration, I will run the Scupper BookInfo example. BookInfo is a well-known example published by Istio. It uses four web microservices. The product page service exposes an ingress port for receiving web application requests. If all four of these services were running on the same cluster in the same namespace, then it would work as originally designed. The services could pass requests to each other as required. But for this demo, two of the services will be running in a public cluster on AWS EU West. The other two services will be running in a private cluster on my laptop. Since the services are running on two different clusters, there is no easy way for the product page service running in EU West to know how to find the detail service running on my laptop. My laptop is mobile. It moves from home to office and it goes on road trips. That makes it even harder to locate. Then my laptop is super secret and I keep it locked down. My laptop cluster does not allow incoming connections. It is not possible for the product page on AWS EU West to connect to the detail service on my laptop. So how can we solve this connectivity problem? This demo uses Scupper to virtualize and to connect the services. Let's see how this works. First, we will deploy the book info service as we see here. Product page and ratings will run on AWS EU West. Details and reviews will run on the laptop. Next, we deploy Scupper in each project namespace. This step sets up some infrastructure pieces to allow proxy control and message routing. Then we connect the Scupper instances. This requires two, two steps. Scupper on AWS creates a connection token that the other Scupper instance can use to connect to it. Then the Scupper on laptop uses the token to connect to AWS. In this demonstration, the two consoles issuing the kubectl commands are running on my laptop. There is no issue with creating the token in one console and transporting it to another computer to be used by the other console session. If the consoles are running on different systems, you may need the SCP to copy the token between systems. Be sure to protect the connection token as it has the credentials for any Scupper installation to connect to the Scupper that generated the token. In this example, we connect from the private environment on my laptop to the public environment on AWS. AWS has the more stable network address, and from a security standpoint, my laptop is not required to open any ingress ports. Note that the Scupper connection is full duplex. Once established, control and data flow over the connection in either direction. The two Scupper instances are peers regardless of how the, the connection was originally established. The last step in getting the Scupper network running is to virtualize the services. By simply annotating the desired service, Scupper is directed to create a virtual service to all Scupper instances in the network. On the laptop, service details is annotated. Scupper creates a detailed proxy on the laptop to receive requests from the Scupper network and forward them to the actual details deployment. Scupper also creates a proxy on AWS to intercept requests for the detail service and forward them to the Scupper network. The review service on the laptop receives the same treatment. The actual deployment is on the laptop and a virtual review service is replicated on AWS. The rating service follows the same pattern, but the actual deployment is on AWS and the virtual routing's proxy is run on the laptop. Scupper forwards these requests from the laptop to AWS. That's the theory. Now let's see how this works in practice. Here I have two console sessions. The top window is to the AWS EU West cluster and the bottom window is to the laptop cluster. I'm going to launch the book info application by applying two YAML scripts. Then we're going to expose the product page. 
So after exposing the product page, it takes a little while before the AWS cluster publishes the application address through its DNS. So I'm going to go ahead and try to launch the application, but it's just not going to be there for a few seconds. And then we're going to cut to another window after we're done waiting for the application to become available. All right, finally the application is available. But because we haven't started Scuppy yet, none of the backend services are addressable. You just get errors from the ratings, details, and review services. So let's get Scupper going. In each window, we issue a Scupper init, and that creates the Scupper in infrastructure. And we create a connection token on the AWS cluster and apply that connection token on the laptop cluster. The token is stored in my home directory, so there was no transporting the file between systems. Now, Scupper status should show that the, each site is connected to one other site. You may have to wait. It sometimes takes a while for that to get set up, as usual. Now we're going to virtualize the services. In each window, we annotate the service that we want to have exposed to the Scupper network. So in the AWS cluster, that's ratings. And in the laptop cluster, that'll be details and reviews. So after Scupper propagates the, the details, or you know, after it finds the annotations, it propagates everything, then the, the same application which was busted a minute ago should now all be working. So product page gets the details and reviews, and reviews gets the ratings back in the uh, public cluster. So in a nutshell, that's Scupper and what it can do. So thank you for watching.